I am Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Dennis Fadiv, the Director of Developer Experience at Tendermint. Dennis, welcome to the show and thank you so much for coming on today. Hey Ashton, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. I'm excited to dive into the world of Cosmos and Tendermint. Your team's been working on so many different things, making so many connections in the blockchain space. I think it's a really great impact. Uh, that Tendermint's having on the industry. Uh, I would love to kick off our time together uh, by just hearing a little bit about Tendermint, Cosmos, Stargate, Starport, all of the things that you're working on and maybe a little bit more specific on your specific role in, in growing all of these initiatives and then we can dive into the details. Sure, so I think the best place to start talking about all of this is uh, what is Cosmos for people who might mm -hmm. not know. So the uh, the, ma the main idea behind Cosmos is that it's a network of blockchains. So Cosmos is not a single blockchain. It's uh, it's a community of people, of builders, of users, and also technology uh, that allows people to build blockchains and connect them. So the, the, the goal is to create this large network of interconnected blockchains, in some ways similar to like the internet, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we've been doing for many years now. And Tenement is one of the core contributors to this whole system. So for a long while, uh, for like for the longest time, we we've been focused on like core um, components of the system, uh, such as Tenement Core, the Consensus Engine, Cosmos SDK, uh, IVC, and this year, all these technologies have finally been connected. Uh, with the release of IBC on Cosmos Hub. Mm -hmm. And Cosmos Hub is one of the blockchains in this Cosmos network. Um, so this this year, IBC uh, was launched on Cosmos Hub and on other blockchains as well. And it, it's con like its adoption continues to grow with more and more blockchains uh, enabling IBC. Uh, and also uh, teams are building IBC implementations for other blockchains as well. Mm -hmm. um, Recently, Tenement has, as a company, uh, um, is focused on delivering, building um, end user products. So one of these products is Emerus, which is the interface for the network of blockchains for Cosmos, essentially, right? So it's, it's a user friendly end user tool uh, interface um, for people to send receive tokens, also swap tokens and do all sorts of cool things. Um, so it's very user friendly. And this is one direction that the company is going into, like making blockchains accessible to end users. And the second main direction is uh, developer experience. So making all of this also accessible to developers and not mm -hmm. only to blockchain developers or Cosmos developers, but pretty much to anyone. And that's where Starport comes in. Uh, Starport is a um, is all-in-one platform for creating, building, and launching blockchains. So, from developers' perspective, it's a tool that you install and you can use from your terminal to quickly create a blockchain, add features to it, uh, very quickly iterate in development, and create um, essentially a new blockchain that you can then deploy, launch, and um, yeah. Right now we're busy building um, Starboard Network, which mm -hmm. is the second piece of the puzzle that will um, enable, uh, empower developers to launch their blockchains uh, live. I mean, you can do it right now, but uh, we're aiming to make it as simple as um, as deploying front-end application. Mm -hmm. Great background, Dennis. Thank you for that. And uh, I'm curious, I want to talk more about Starport, but I wanted to just cover some of the things you said uh, there about IBC, you know, I, I think the viewers probably aren't familiar with uh, the inner blockchain communication protocol, which was one of the updates that your team came out with uh, back in the first quarter of this year. Um, and with that inner blockchain communication protocol, having all these different blockchains being built through uh, the Cosmos SDK, is it all... I know that there's a bunch of blockchains out right now that are, that have been built with this technology. So does that tech technology to IBC allow them to cross-communicate with each other as well as cross-communicating with 
blockchains like Ethereum or Bitcoin that are outside of the uh, Tendermint ecosystem? Or maybe you can elaborate on that. Sure. So IBC is a low level protocol um, that allows data transfer between blockchains. And there are three requirements for a blockchain to be able to implement IBC. So, I mean, it, it is quite technical, but like um, it, it has to have like a key value store ability to uh, execute smart contracts um, and it has to have uh, fast finality. So if a blockchain is capable of that, if it satisfies these basic requirements of IBC, it can implement it either as a smart contract or as a, or as a module or whatever, right? Um, both Bitcoin and Ethereum are, do not satisfy these requirements. So they can, they cannot implement IBC as is. So there will, um, so right now work is being done on implementing bridges to these blockchains yeah. because they're extremely popular. So of course it's high priority to, to do that. But, uh, other blockchains that are, um, dare I say more modern, uh, can implement IBC directly. And of mm -hmm. course, all Cosmos blockchains are enabled, IBC enabled by default. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And is there some notable blockchains that people are familiar with that were probably built with the Cosmos SDK, but people don't really understand that because that's the, the back technology that you don't really hear about? Well, aside from Cosmos Hub, which is like the poster child for Cosmos SDK and IBC, uh, there are many, many other blockchains. I mean, you can visit cosmos.network. We have an ecosystem page with um, literally hundreds of blockchains. Uh, but mm, some of them are like Terra, Akash, Region, Osmosis. Mm -hmm. um, so many, many blockchains that actually are very interesting because they implement uh, a particular application. Like they're not, they're not only about smart contracts and tokens. Right, they they implement a particular um, business app. I mean, not business application, but uh, they implement a particular application that users can play with. And um, yeah, and the advantage is that they're all connected. So mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's really cool. Definitely. And with the development of all these, you know, more modern blockchains, uh, there's been all this discussion around like you know the Ethereum killers, or you know, wh when is one of these blockchains gonna take over? and be the new network effect that people go to um, because of the inefficiencies of, of Ethereum where it's at right now. Do you have any insight on, you know, why that hasn't seemed to happen yet? And, you know, these Ethereum 2.0 killers really uh, aren't able to grow as big as Ethereum? So what I love about Cosmos, I mean, I like many things about Cosmos, but one, one thing in particular is that we don't see other blockchains as competitors. And that that's what differentiates us from others because we want all blockchains to succeed and we all want all blockchains to enable IBC at some point because mm -hmm. that, that implements the vision behind Cosmos to have this mm -hmm. huge network where users can easily transfer assets, data, tokens, what have you between chains. So, uh, so that's why we don't see any blockchain as an Ethereum killer, right? We we just wish all of them were con uh, were connected because that's that's for the benefit of end users. End users don't mm -hmm. want to be siloed in into a particular ecosystem, uh, as good as, as it may be. Like maybe there are blockchains that are much better than Ethereum, but it doesn't mean that uh, the future is multi-chain. Basically, that's that's mm -hmm. kind of the idea behind Cosmos. Definitely, yeah. No, I agree as well. And I'm curious, you know, you're focused on the developer experience. How easy and, and fluid has uh, the team made it for developers that say they have developed on Ethereum using Solidity, or maybe they just use traditional programming languages and they've never developed on a blockchain? You know, why should they go and start using the Cosmos ecosystem to develop? And, and how easy has your team made it? Yeah, we've been working hard for more than a year now to deliver the best developer experience that I personally seen um, in in blockchain. It's extremely easy, especially for um, for non blockchain developers because uh, because of how similar it is to building traditional web applications. Pretty much with just a single command. I mean, with literally a single command, you install 
a CLI tool with one more command, you create a new sovereign chain um, with all the source code, with a web application that includes a wallet. Soon we'll be adding mobile component to that as well. So it's, it's a complete platform that you can build on top of. And with just a few commands, you can add functionality. Like, for example, um, you want your blockchain to deal with, I don't know, with products for like a logistics application or something and you just run one command and it adds all the code and the only thing you need to do is put the 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 application specific code in the function in the functions that are responsible for handling messages and the whole concept is very similar to traditional web applications because you have requests you process these requests and these requests change the state and the blockchain is just the state so it's very easy to understand and it's very easy to get started with. And especially with, with the Starport CLI tool that we, we have uh, that you can install today and start playing with it. Um, it's, it's not much different than building like a web application, except that you get all this, these great benefits of having like, um, uh, uh, currency as a primitive, right? Like that's what differentiates, um, blockchains from traditional applications. And also the fact that it's, essentially immutable, right? So um, it's decentralized, so you don't have to trust anyone um, mm-hmm. with with uh, with your application. And yeah, uh, for, for smart contract developers, it is also very simple because they, at some point, were uh, traditional web application developers, right? So they, they, they are familiar with the flow. Even though smart contracts are different from Cosmos SDK modules, um, even if you're not a Go developer, like, I, I have background in front end development and it, it, it is very easy for, for, for front end developers because we try, like, when we started Starport, we actually tried to bring the, the great uh, developer experience that front end developers have to the mm-hmm. blockchain world. And I think we largely succeeded. Mm-hmm. That's great to know. And do you see a flock of developers just naturally moving towards wanting to develop? through the Cosmos SDK? Or are you also providing incentives and, and trying to attract smart developers to, to move there? Or is it a balance of both? So um, aside from trying to make it simpler and trying to improve the experience, uh, we are investing heavily in like tutorials and making it accessible from like the learning perspective. But also we, um, we host hackathons um, and, uh, and with with Starport CLI, it's, it's been incredibly easy to participate in hackathons and earn prizes. And of course, if projects are interesting, then, then we, we, we try to incentivize people who are building to, to build more, like bring this to production. And, um, I mean, we, we can see even on GitHub, like how many chains are scaffolded with Starport and like daily new chains come in. Of course, some 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 uh, some projects are are uh, weekend projects, but that's that's the goal. Like our goal is mm-hmm. to make it possible for people to experiment on a weekend and not have to like invest uh, like six months trying yeah. to get it off the ground. And they can just like they can just do it over the weekend and uh, maybe decide whether that's for them or not. And um, in a couple of weeks after they they successfully tried going through a tutorial, they can like really really focus on it and maybe deliver something in in just a couple of months instead of years. Definitely. Yeah, I could see that as being a big barrier to entry for developers thinking they need to develop an application. And if it's going to take months and months, then there's going to be a lot more uh, preparation needed before they can just go and jump in to Starport and, and just start coding. It sounds like your team has made it super easy to just put a couple lines of code in and, and have something, you know, ready to be built yeah absolutely and with with a developer guide we have you can just follow follow the steps and learn from zero to building a dex by all by yourself in like a span of a weekend like literally in a weekend you can go from zero to building a dex Mm -hmm. uh, an ibc enabled dex so your chain will also Mm -hmm. be uh automatically kind of connected to all other chains so it's, it's pretty incredible to be honest it's very incredible. And, and this is more of a, a high level question, but you know, merging from web 2.0 to web 3.0, um, 
how do you see these communities bridging together properly so that down the road here, as we have all of this communication between blockchains, that the true nature of the decentralized vision that everybody wants comes into fruition and, and everything is nice like roses? I think the key is user experience. Like we need to improve end user experience of blockchains dramatically before it it goes mainstream. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Tenement has been doing a great job at that with, with Emirates. Um, so we are making it very easy for people not to think in terms of like individual blockchains, even though this is how it's all implemented, but end users might not care about that, right? They they mm -hmm. they 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 just want to see a list of assets that they have um, in blockchain, right? Like mm -hmm. in the whole in the whole system, and that's that's what Emirates provides. And of course, one of the one of the killer features that I think uh, we need to implement at some point is to make uh, key management as seamless mm -hmm. as possible. Uh, that's probably like the, the the hardest piece in this puzzle to make sure that people are both um, they can they can uh, they can have control over their assets, but at the same time have experience comparable to what they get if they just like sign up in a, using a traditional sign in mm -hmm. sign up flow, right? They just press a button and it's all working. And of course, it's it's a it's a very big design and UX challenge. But I think, I think we are well, we are the ones that are capable of like, handling it in the next um, I don't know year or several years. Definitely, and I agree, Dennis. I think the user experience on decentralized exchanges and and you know non custodial platforms is going to be key because when there's no cu uh, you know custody, you, you have to deal with it yourself. And if you're not technically inclined, you, the developers need to make these applications as easy as possible for people to be able to use it uh, and get into the decentralized world really easily. Great. Well, thank yeah. you so much for coming on. Um, I would love to know, you know, for the developers that are interested in learning more about Cosmos SDK, as well as just people that are interested in, you know, the blockchains that have been built so far and what other things are coming down the road for Tendermint, What's the best way for them to learn more and to get involved? So you can definitely follow us on Twitter because we, we post every update there. So um, um, Tenement HQ, Starboard HQ, and Emirates HQ. Uh, that's our handles. And also cosmos.network slash Starboard to get latest information about Starboard. Um, so yeah, uh, we, we have a lot of plans uh, on the roadmap this year. Um, mainly Starboard Network. Uh, we're hoping to launch a testnet of this blockchain and streamline launch uh, streamline the process of launching blockchains even further. Uh, Emirates will get many updates this year, and we're actively working on mobile versions of mm. these applications. So that's that that's pretty exciting. Very exciting, and thank you for those links. I will leave those in the description box below as well. All the best on moving forward with Starport and everything in Tendermint as well, Dennis. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on and let's follow up in the near future. Thank you. Bye.